For many years in 3ds Max, we've had a function called the Reactor Controller, or the Reaction Controller. And what this does is allows us to set up how an object should move when another object does something specific. So if one object rotates, then all the other objects will react to it. Well, in this release, what we've done is created a whole new interface to it, a new way of working with reaction controllers. So to give you an idea of that, let's just set up a quick reaction on this hand here. The hand was created by John Chalfant. So what I'm going to do is just go in first and hide the mesh because we don't really need to see it for the moment. So let's just hide that. And what I'm going to do is pick the first joint of the first finger. We're just going to set up a reaction that does a finger curl. So to do that, go into animation, pull up the reaction manager, and because I'm dealing with some limited real estate for the uh, screen capture, we'll just shrink that view. So all I have to do first is pick what is going to be my master object, what's the controller. So I just go in and tell it's this object and it's going to be specifically the Y rotation of that object that's going to control the other two fingers. Now I can just fence select the other two fingers and simply say add selected and again this time it'll be the Y rotation. So there's our master and our two slaves that are going to be driven by it. This is automatically then created a state, state 1 which is bone index Y rotation and Y rotation in, in neutral. I could obviously name this to be finger straight as well. Now at this point I simply go to create mode and say alright we want to, I'll just rotate this on local, we want to go in and rotate this till about there and then I'm just going to use my page up page down keys to move through the hierarchy and simply position my finger joints something like so. Once I've done that I just have it set the state and move out of create state mode. At this point now if I go in and pick on just that upper finger I automatically get this roll. So I can continue going through and setting up states for all the other finger joints and hand joints. So at this point let's just take a look at a finished piece and do some modifications to it. So here you can see we have a finished version of the hand where we set up a number of reactions. You can see them here in the reaction manager. These are all reacting off the hand controller. And you can see all these little spinners spinning around. These are the controls we've built in with custom attributes to that hand control. So now what we want to do is go in and start to finesse this a little bit. So one of the problems you typically have when you do any kind of automated reactive animation is the reactions are typically very linear. So what I mean by that is any time the motion is going from state 1 to state 2, it doesn't do any ease in or ease out because it doesn't know what it's supposed to do. It'll just, from in a very linear way, go from one to the other. So to deal with that, what we can do is, in this case on the index finger, let's make these two joints rotate faster as this curls. So right now you can see it's all very even. All the joints are curling at the same speed. So let's just say we're going to speed that up a little bit. So looking at the index finger, I can pick either one of the two slaves. When a slave is picked, you can see my curve in the view of how that motion should happen. So in this case, you're seeing state 1 and then state 2 and then a very linear curve in between them. What I can do is simply go in here and say Bezier corner, grab this and move it, and you can now see the finger joint starting to animate quicker. So let's just push that all the way down so that rolls up very, very quickly. I can go into the next bone, do the exact same thing, and again roll it up very quickly. So now this finger will, will veritably pop into the initial animation and then curl slowly near the end to finish. So it gives me a lot of control. Now of course if I had more than two states for this finger motion I would see more than the two black dots in this curve and I could adjust the flow through all of those points. Now the power of uh, being able to go in and adjust these curves is the simple fact that it saves me building multiple states. Typically if I wanted to do this with linear curves then I'd have to go in and set at least one state somewhere in the middle of this motion to define where all the joints should be at that point. Here I can go with just two states and just adjust the curve and get a nice offset in my motion. Also when I'm building reactions that involve multiple slaves in a hierarchy, I can make them look much more organic by simply offsetting the motions using this curve.